Talk Radio. You are listening to Packers Talk Radio Network. PackersTalk.com. Eddie Lacy, Mike Daniels, Gilbert Brown, Don Barclay, Micah Hyde, your Green Bay Packers, yesterday's legends and today's superstars. From corporate or nonprofit events to private parties, add some spice. Hire a Packers player from Mayfield Sports Marketing. For details, just go to PackersTalk.com and click on Player Appearances. Are you looking for some signed Packer memorabilia? Look no further than Waukesha Sports Cards. If the Green Bay Packer can sign it, Waukesha Sports Cards has it. Check our website for upcoming Packer player and legend signing. Go to WaukeshaSportsCards.com. You're listening to the best Packer radio show on the internet. Cheesehead Radio. You need to win your home games. That's, that's the thought process uh, that we're, it's clearly prevalent each and every time we line up to play here at Lambeau Field. We didn't, we didn't get it done tonight. I mean, it, there's, there's, no, there's no big something's broke here. I mean, we've we got to do a better job on the little things. I mean, every game plan I've ever put together here starts with the run game. Do more damn ball drills here in the history of football. So, and it didn't show up tonight. That's how you know you messed up. I just want to go on the record and say that CD picked the music leading into the show tonight with no participation from the other three of us. But hey, welcome to Cheesehead Radio. And no home of the ten- either. Exactly. Home of the 10 and 6 Green Bay Packers. I'd like to remind everybody that the Green Bay Packers are 10 and 6 and in the playoffs. So I don't want to have any negativity today, CD. Okay? My name is John Rehor from PackersTalk.com. I'm joined by some of the finest in the Packers bloggers who is my co-host for this wonderful show. The aforementioned CD Angeli from Cheesehead TV and PackersTalk.com. Jersey Albrecco from Cheesehead TV and PackersTalk.com, and Jamie Snowden from Cheesehead TV. We're going to talk about the playoff mound Green Bay Packers tonight. I don't want to hear none of this nonsense about how they, you know, pooped the bed last week when they couldn't, you know, clinched a home game in the division, but whatever, okay? They're going to the playoffs. No negativity tonight, Jamie. We don't need a guest tonight because we're all here for the first time in about six weeks probably, so no guests tonight unless there's more surprises that we just don't know about. Before we get started, I do want to send a quick shout-out to our sponsors, Mayfield Sports Marketing, who you can follow on Twitter, at Mayfield Sport, and Waukesha Sports Cards, who you can follow on Twitter, at Walk Sports. They are the people that make the show go. Be sure and give them a follow if you're on Twitter. And if you're not on Twitter, get on it. We have a little bit to talk about tonight, about the 10-6 and 6 playoff on Green Bay Packers. Let's get to it. Jersey Al and Jamie bring you this week's Packer News. Well, three weeks ago, we thought it was safe to take a little holiday break here at Chiefs Egg Radio. The Packers was com- were coming off three straight wins and were in sole possession of first place in the NFC North. What could possibly go wrong? Well, fast forward to today, and we find the Packers having to travel to Washington, D.C. this Sunday as a wild card playoff entry. You can be sure that as disappointed as Packers as Packers organization is, so are the fine people of Green Bay. A playoff weekend in Green Bay is a boom for the local economy, with playoff games estimated to bring in over $15 million to Green Bay and surrounding towns. That's a lot of money going to Washington, D.C. And hey, don't we all send enough money to Washington already? Oh, yes, we do, but not without complaining about it, much like we're doing with this Packers team of ours. Packers Nation has been up in arms for weeks, but it's all come to a head with the Packers losing the division title at home to the hated Vikings. Oh, the horror. It does seem like the apocalypse now. As horrific is what the Packers' offense has been over the second half of the season, with this Vikings game being no different. Struggling with their down conversions all year while vowing every week to fix the problem, the Packers went out and converted only two out of 15 third down chances in this game. Throw in a one-for-four red zone performance, light a match, and you've got a dumpster fire. If only it were that easy to burn away all their problems and forget about it, but alas, there is more torture, I mean another game, coming up this Sunday. 
The wild card Packers will enter FedEx Field looking to upset, yes, that's right, upset the NFC East champion Washington, you know who's, who are 6-2 and two at home this year. And they'll have to do it being even more banged up than they were the last few weeks. The Packers show a whopping 18 players on their injury list. That's one-third of their roster. Sam Shields still has not made it out of concussion protocol. David Bakhtiari is still a toss-up for Sunday. Demarius Randall was added today with a groin injury, and Dave Tone Jones was sent out of town to a specialist to have his neck injury looked at. And that was the latest Packers news. Next up is Gems from the Packers Twitterverse. This week's Gems from the Packers Twitterverse. We can't have a losing week go by without a plethora of gems from the JS Comments account. Well, tough to pick just one. We're going with this one because we all know how well this has worked before. Chip Kelly, combo GM and coach, could replace both TT and MM. Great idea, tweeter, whoever brought, brought that out. While everyone has been trying to figure out what's wrong with Aaron Rodgers, SI.com's Peter Bukowski, who's been a guest on the show, has a suggestion on how to bring back the Rodgers we know. Someone whisper in Aaron Rodgers' ear something Skip Bayless said. <laughs> Still on the Aaron Rodgers topic, our own C.D. Angeli looked to stir the pot a bit this week and asked this question that no one really wants to consider. I mean, people say Aaron sucks or blame it on the receivers, McCarthy, line, personal problems, etc. What if he's just in decline? Ooh, I'm closing my ears to that one. There's your first negativity. Absolutely. Coming from we know, we know who to expect the case. Mm-hmm. All right. Finally... Something to remind us that football is just something to keep our minds off of other things comes a tweet from Adam Chet. He's a writer over at Cheesehead TV and has been diagnosed with stage 4 colon cancer. A few days before going in for surgery, Adam tweeted, When the Packers play on Sunday, I hope I'm, one, alive, two, have less cancer in me, and three, coherent enough to watch and swear at the hospital TV. That, folks, was your Cheesehead Radio Tweet of the Week. Tweets of the Week. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so everybody who's currently voting 75% of John B., Mr. Negative, to hell with you. It wasn't me. (laughs) I I think there's such a thing as facetious positivity. I'm going to Google that. You please. If you say so. Is that like (laughs) okay first? That's cool. Is that positivity or positivity? Good question. I don't know, but I'm getting sick of hearing the same things over and over in press conferences lately, so let's avoid that word. (laughs) That's why I stopped listening to press conferences, because I can just go to anyone from the last 10 years, hit play, and go, oh, okay, 2016 now. That's not negative. That makes you a true fan, John. You are a true fan. Exactly. A true fan. True Packer fan. You always know that it's, that you're coming off of a losing week when the not a true fan hashtag appears on Twitter, Facebook, direct messages, email. Yeah. Do people just say that to you, like in person? Do they just walk up to you and do like the hashtag and one go not a fan and walk away? That <laughs> you need would, a t-shirt. That John. would be you the need highlight. A t-shirt. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag not a true fan. <laughs> In all seriousness, we have other things we can talk about tonight, but I will share this with you. I was on one of the illustrious Packers groups not named Packer Peeps, and I made a comment. Well, there's your first face. Uh, yeah, I know. exactly. I, I know. Strike one. I, I'm admitting my fault. So, Swing and a miss. But I, I made a, a one-sentence comment, and I was sent a message which said, John, you are not a true fan. End of comment. From someone I've never interacted with before. Okay. Good. Good to know. Good to know. <laughs> Well, at least it was from somebody you've never interacted it. with and not when you have interacted with. Oh, they were interacted this with time. via private messages afterwards in a 2011-era John fashion. So I don't think that they'll be communicating with me much in the future or ever again. So they're, so they're not a true fan of you now. Exactly. <laughs> so many connotations <laughs> we can come up with here. This is fun. I have the rants with Rahor staying ready to go at some point, so please let me know when. <laughs> and please let me know when. I think I think this says a lot about the state of the team that we are starting the post news section of the show discussing John's Facebook private messages and what 
not, you know, the phrase not a true fan. That's how much we would, those are the things we'd rather talk about right now than the way the team is playing. You know what I'm going to do? No, no, you know what I'm going to do here? I'm going to start out positively because I am a true fan and I am perhaps the epitome of positivity. And I'd like you to say that three times fast. No. For, like all water water casino, casino. for all the years, Mr. Rahor, that you have typed in a <laughs> hashtag of fire capers. All the years that about. you have typed that. All the years. I mean, I think you've typed fire capers more times than uh, Al has taken Mason Crosby to premature gray. Dom Capers' defense okay. has done an awfully good job, especially in the latter half of this year. This is a defense that's good enough. Football Outsider, Outsiders, which does its uh, DVOA, some people agree with it, some people don't. Right now, weighted defensive rankings have them 14th best defense in the NFL. If you don't weight it, if you don't weight that defense, it's the seventh best defense in the NFL. Dom Capers. All we had to do was get rid of A.J. Hawk and Brad Jones. Even last week, playing against the Minnesota Vikings, which is you know, not necessarily a, a powerhouse of an offense, but does have a, a pretty good Teddy Bridgewater and obviously Adrian Peterson. One of the touchdowns was defensive. We held the Vikings to 13 points. That's a winnable game for any any offense in the NFL. If you can hold an NFL team to 13 points, no reason you should lose that game. Dom Capers has done quite a bit with almost as many injuries on the defensive side of the ball as offensive. So I'm starting out the positive train. Someone feel free to attach on and or be the caboose if you want. No, I'll I'll uh, join that train. No, you I you can't get on the down papers thing yet. You're you're always anti down papers. We have to be <laughs> on the train right now. Um no, this is I'm on the train with that because you are absolutely right. You hold the other team to thirteen points. Any offense, you should be able to beat the other team. Any offense with Aaron Rodgers, any offense with Eddie Lacy, any any offense should be able to score more than 13 points at home to win the division. And and then you look at the, the injuries that the defense is playing with. Banged up line, Sam Shields has been out for three weeks, four weeks now. I don't remember how long. Um, and, you know, you mentioned A.J. Hawk and Brad Jones. Well, we've replaced them, but we've replaced them with just people who are exactly like them, so slow and kind of lumbering. They they play towards the ball a little bit more, but he's still playing with a lot of deficiencies, and yet that group is still finding ways to bend a little but not break a lot, to to keep the Packers in a lot of games, and the offense is not bailing them out. So it's really weird that at the end of this season, I, I really feel like Capers is actually 100% safe. And I don't, I don't think I felt that way at any other time, except for maybe the Super Bowl year. Maybe. Can I jump in now? <laughs> I Go suppose. Ahead. All now, right. Fine. For those of, you know, for the three or four people that have read things that I've written over the last few years, I was very anti, you know, Dom for a long time. But I did say last year that I had a change of perspective on things, and maybe it wasn't him to blame. Maybe it was the players that he was given. And, you know, it is true. You got rid of A.J. Hawk or Brad Jones, and, Suddenly the defense is pretty good. But there's one thing I want to say, and this is with regards to what you just said, Jamie. Do I think he's safe? I do, except for one thing. Could he be thinking about retiring? Because that's, I think he's 67 years old, if memory serves. I mean, at some point, take a look at someone like Tom Coughlin, who was 70 when he retired. He's going to want to walk away from the game. So I would say that he is safe for you know next year, unless he decides to walk away in his own terms. Um, the only 65. way that I can see 65. It, it, the only way I could see him not coming back is literally if they cleaned house entirely of the coaching staff. I, and I mean gutted everybody. Um, I think that he is definitely – well, I'm sorry. I mean, that that was a big topic of conversation earlier this week too. Um, but I do think he's – you know, if you want to put the – earned his stripes for another season based on the play he's gotten. Um, and that was with – there's a lot of people hurt right now. And they're still – with the exception of the Arizona game, over the last month, they, that defense has held this team together while the offense has continued to kind of putter along. So, Dom, you're my boy, and I'm being serious. Never change. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add on to that, John, just, just because. 
think how good a Dom Capers defense could have been, especially the latter half of this year, as well as they were doing, if the offense wasn't constantly doing three and outs or short drives and giving the ball yep. back and making them go back and defend more. I mean, this should be more than a 14th ranked defense. This should this could be a 10th or or 7th or 5th ranked defense, except for the fact that they're constantly on defense because the offense. You get to the point. Can't make a third this is, down. This is the slight. This is the slight negativity. Just slight. It's not much, but it's slight. Just a well, little bit of negativity. I'll, I'll throw. I'll throw a positive note on top of that. Then I think we could maybe give, despite the fact that there are 18 people on the injury injury report right now, a little kudos to conditioning staff for the fact that if the defense is constantly playing and still 14th in the league, that's not that bad. So, therefore, they must be in pretty good shape to keep running all the time since they never get a chance to sit down. Yeah, the, the other they thing play is soccer games. The, <laughs> the, the other thing is, is they've got a lot better depth on defense this year. The, those first two draft picks, you know, picking up Randall and Rollins, I mean, those are two guys that, that have been forced into action and have done absolutely well. Imagine if we didn't draft <laughs> Those guys, you know, last year. Imagine if we, you know, drafted an offensive lineman or or a wide receiver. Well, no, that's not a good example. But uh, just imagine with the injuries that we've had on the defense. Sam Shield's been out a couple of times. Hayward's been out. Um, what we would be, you know, where we would be. So they've had much better depth. Same thing goes for the defensive line, you know, with, with uh, Latroy Guyon coming back and Raji coming back. And you've got Pennell and Deacon Jones. You've got all these guys that they can rotate in and out and keep them fresh. And it's been necessary, as CD said, because they're on the field so much. So I, I think that's a big part of it, too, is, yes, conditioning, but also the fact that they've got more quality players they can throw in there. You know what's really devastating about Dayton Jones, too, is, you know, for the first time I think we can say that he's actually played like a first-rounder, even while he's been playing like a hybrid DN, outside linebacker, mm-hmm. you know, whatever you want to call him, and a guy hurts his neck. And as we know, when a Packer hurts his neck, that means either his head has fallen off or he's never going to play again. So, I, you know, I, I really hope that it's not as severe as we've become accustomed to Packer players with neck injuries. Uh, you know, I, uh, when I read that, it was like, God, if this is another guy who's going to have his career cut short because of a neck injury, it's just, it's tragic. So, you know, let's hope that that doesn't get to that point because I've been very happy with the way he's played in particular. I thought that he was approaching that bus status. Yeah, not quite. He was getting it this year finally. Yeah, I mean, they, they were they were using him on uh, on a limited basis for most of the season, earlier and mid-season, but he was making impact plays when he was in there. He was in there a lot on goal line defense, and it seemed like he was always making a tackle, you know, tackle for a loss here and there or, or putting a pr- getting nice pressure on the quarterback. And then they started to use him more. I think they started to feel a little more comfortable with him. And you saw him coming on, and you know, as, as you noted, he was really playing much better uh, in the last month or so and, and now this injury. So let's just hope that it's just a stinger or something like that and, and he'll be fine. I think uh, one thing I want to stop back to uh, is the Mike McCarthy issue. And what? Is I guess issue we're, with Mike McCarthy? Well, we're talking about what? whether we're going to fire Don Capers, which has been this kind of knee-jerk reaction for what, the last roughly, what, eight years. And now we have this, this feeling of, of, of firing Mike McCarthy, which I think all three of you will agree with you, me immediately, is not going to happen. No. You, guys, you guys do agree with me, right? Right, I agree. With you. Well, well, it could happen in the same regards that a meteor could fall through my roof right now. Okay. Very, 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 very well, open. Okay. If a yeah. meteor falls from your roof, that's not really a meteor. Then it has to fall <laughs> well, from other places. Where like do you live? How about this? How about <laughs> it's the same chance that I could fall from my roof while sitting in our second bedroom? Kind of a chance. Okay. It could okay. happen. So while being struck by lightning simultaneously. Exactly. Twice. Twice. And okay. hitting the power ball lot of Yes. No, he can't do that because I've already done it. But anyway, I, I've got the winning uh, ticket for Saturday. So, But getting back to the McCarthy thing, here's the reality. Everyone keeps talking, and, and I think – I can't remember which one of you touched on it a second ago, but it really kind of made me think, how do coaches leave a team? Well, we always assume they're fired, and, and a good number of them are fired, but they also leave. They can choose to leave. I mean, let's go back in time. Uh, Vince Lombardi won in Super Bowls with the Packers. He wasn't fired. He left. Mike Holmgren 
won a Super Bowl with the Packers. He wasn't fired. He left. Um, we're in, you know, Mike Sherman was was fired. Ray Rhodes was fired. Lindy Infante, Bart Starr, uh, Forrest Gray, they're all fired. So the chances that Mike McCarthy is going to be fired at any point is pretty unlikely. The chances are he's going to choose to leave. The question may be, have, have things gone to the point where he may look and say, hey, is it time to retire? Is it time to find another opportunity? Is this getting close, especially if you think of some of the tumult that has gone on between himself and rumored with Aaron Rodgers and a spat and just having this offense not get off the ground and talk of a poison locker room, do you think he could choose to leave? <laughs> I, I feel like he's who wants to go Yeah, he's entrenched. He is entrenched. You'd have to drag him out of there with a, I don't know, with what, a crane to get him out of yeah. there. I, He's not I don't. Anymore. I don't see it in his personality to say, you know what, this this just isn't working. I'm going to try something else. Nothing from the last month, of, except for him deciding to take play calling back, has really showed me that he's been like, no, no. You know what? A change needs to happen, and I'm going to make that change. So I really don't see that he can make that life change either. Yeah, and, and, you know, most coaches that choose to leave, as, as you were saying, like Lombardi and Holmgren, they're looking for something more. You know, they were looking to be to be GM of a team, to be, have total control. Uh, that's not McCarthy. You know, he's, he's often stated he has very little interest in, in making those type of decisions. He wants to coach the players that are given to him and coach them to the best of his ability and win Super Bowls. So I don't think he's that type of guy that would leave looking for, you know, more responsibility somewhere else. And I don't I actually, think there's this dream job out there. Sorry, John. You can that's go. Okay. No, go ahead. No, I was just said, and I don't think there's a, a dream job opening out there that would be, you know, a dream coaching job. Like, oh, I really would like to coach that team. Just maybe San Francisco, but what about with Pittsburgh? the state they're in. What if for some reason Pittsburgh was looking for a coach? Go back home. Would that I don't, be? I don't think they'd be looking for a coach. This, no, I don't think they'd be looking for a coach this year. But yeah, I could yeah, see that. I could see that, or San Francisco. I mean, San Francisco's looking, but I still, I don't think he, I don't think he'd do it. Not this year. Oh no. no Sorry, John. That's okay. There's actually one scenario where I could see Mike walking away, and it actually has very little to do with football and more with the personal life. You know, if you look back at, you know, the beginning of the season, he went through the not to bring up the game, but the disastrous result at the end of the NFC Championship game. And right after that, his brother died. And, you know, as someone that has gone through something like that, you know, I have the luxury of saying I don't live in the NFL world where I'm working 18 hours a day, basically 365 days a year. I wonder how well he's dealt with that and in looking at his own life. And, you know, he's got young children, an older child, you know, I just wonder if, like, at some point the tug of, like, personal life is going to maybe say, you know what, I'm going to take that break. You know, the break that Bill Cowher's gone on, that Jake, uh, John Gruden's gone on, where they walk away from the game, and you assume that at some point they're going to go back to coaching, but then they never really do. I honestly wonder, after this season, this season, and the beginning of 2015, and how everything kind of went this year, if that may not be something you think about. I don't want him to walk away. Let me make that perfectly clear. I think that if he were to walk away, it would be not something that he was asked to do or forced to do. I think it would be something that he chose to do to kind of get his perspective on life back in order. Um, do I think it's going to happen? No. But do I think he could think about it? I honestly do. I, I think he, he very well could think about it. Well, there you go. <laughs> well, let's get one more little piece of positive news out before we really delve into perhaps more of the possibly critical. Brett Favre. Did you hear the news? Is he coming back? Who is, who is he again? He is unretiring from the NFL Hall of Fame now. <laughs> uh, recently made the is among the first-time eligibles to make the list of 15 finalists to enter the Pro Football Hall of Fame. This, I'm sure, comes as a shock, it comes as a shock to everyone because we weren't expecting this anyway as we're already making plans to travel to Canton possibly for the Packers to play at the Hall of Fame game. Um, but Terrell Owens, Alan Fineka, Morton Anderson, Steve Atwater, Don Coriel, Terrell Davis, Tony Dungy, Kevin Green, Marvin Harrison, Joe Jacoby, Edgerin James, John Lynch, Orlando Pace, Kurt Warner are the guys he's going to be competing with. They didn't announce senior candidates yet, right? I don't believe so. 
I think they no, they're not. Afterwards. Yeah. Kevin and of course, Green there's a player. Again, huh? cool. There's a player we're hoping for that senior cut, and hopefully, you'll make it one of these years very quickly. Yep. So it will be decided on February 6th, the day before the Super Bowl, and the inductions, of course, will be at the Hall of Fame game uh, weekend in August. Any uh, names that really jump out at you in that list of 15 besides Favre? Well, Kevin Green, mm-hmm. and he's made the top yeah. 15. That's good. Orlando I didn't realize Pace. that Edger and James. Go ahead. Five I years, didn't realize right? Edger and James has been out of the league for five years. Five years, yeah. <laughs> oh, shit, the edge. I think it's interesting looking at players like Terrell Davis and Edger and James. I think it's hard to be a running back and make the Hall of Fame. And I, I think we've discussed this before whether Terrell Davis is worthy of it, uh, having only run for you know having several fantastic seasons, but a short season, as opposed to maybe some other players who've had lengthy careers. Uh, it'd be interesting to see if those guys make the cut. Typically, they put in what anywhere from two to five players. I think that's pretty standard, right? I would say so. I mean, if you want to take a look I mean, at the list, I mean, I think everyone would agree that Favre is a lock. Agree? I think so, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think. I honestly think the next lock, if I had to put another lock on, I want to say Terrell Owens, but I just can't. <sighs> uh, I, I but would, I agree. I won't say it either, but yes, probably a lock. Um, let's see. I think you could make an argument, or at least a case, that Orlando Pace is a lock. Yeah, that was the name, one name that stuck out to me when he was reading it before. Um, how about Don Coriel? That was going to be my fourth. Yeah, I mean, how is he not in the Hall of Fame by now? How is he? Didn't win a Super Bowl. Wow. Well, he revolutionized uh, the game. And he did. Story coach. Um, who else? Alan Fennick? Um, maybe not. Marvin Harrison? No. Joe Jacoby, if you're looking at uh, offensive tackles. 12-year career, he's got to be considered, along with Orlando Pace. That's, those are the only Kurt names. Warner. That, Kurt Warner. Kurt he won Warner. a Super Bowl. He won a Super Bowl. Okay. His team won a Super Bowl, but yeah, okay. And he, I don't know if you know, he used to work in a grocery store stacking canned goods, and then he won a Super Bowl. It's a great story. Well, I don't think I've heard it fact, for a couple of years, but I heard it many times. Well, the Packers' current long snapper used to work in his what family's subway shop. So maybe if they win the Super Bowl, they can have a story about him, and then he can go into the Hall of Fame too. I'm just saying. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. Here's my thing about Kurt Warner. Okay, and I'm going to. Okay. Okay. He had right. two really good years with the Rams. Disappeared for like five years. Had yeah. two really good years with the Cardinals. So. Yeah. Uh, I would love to have him go in the Hall of Fame because for everything you've ever seen about him, other than some of the comments he's made on NFL Network, you know, he just seems like a genuinely nice guy. He had a very nice career, you know, back to far, came in as a free agent, blah, 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 was with the greatest show on turf, all that other stuff. Blah, but blah, his blah. career is bookended with good times and then not a lot in the middle to speak of. And he was hurt a good chunk of that. So, you know, there's reasons for it, but. Backup quarterback with the New York Giants for a few years. Right. Yeah. Uh, to me, I, I, uh, to me, he's not a Hall of Fame. I, I've said that forever. I don't think it's enough. I, I think it. You know, he may very well fall into that veterans committee category further down the road. Um, mm-hmm. When they took a look at players who were really, 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 really good at the time, but maybe did not quite, you know, based on the other people they were going against uh, during their the quote normal induction procedure. And I think that he'll get in the Hall of Fame eventually. I just don't think he'll ever be voted in uh, by anyone other than the veterans committee. Fair thought. Yeah, absolutely. Well, moving on, I guess another slight bit of, uh, I suppose we should switch off with a little bit of, of negativity. Uh, we really got to talk about the state of this team. And uh, the Packers started out 6-0. 6-0. 6-0 Green Bay Packers. Time that was. At that point, at that point going into the bye week, the Green Bay Packers were pretty much touted, were ballyhooed uh, as being Ballyhoo. the Super Bowl. Hey, there you are. The Super Bowl favorites. I mean, we were already ready to book a ticket. We were assured that this was going to be a Super Bowl year. Coming out of the bye, the Green Bay Packers just stumbled, lost a bunch in a row, had some embarrassing losses. They've gone four and six. That is sub-500 for you uh, non-math people. Football Outsiders has now given the Green Bay Packers a 0.8% chance of all the teams remaining in the playoffs of winning the Super Bowl. They are the 16th place team. Uh, 
team of the 16 teams in the Super Bowl. 6 and 0, 6 and 0 before the bye, the favorite. Oh, oh. Whoa. Well, as, as somebody what said happened? on Twitter, that's why they're called football outsiders. Well, that they are. <laughs> Wait, that means that there is a better chance that the Cincinnati Bengals will win the Super Bowl or than the, the Green Vikings, Bay Packers. Or the Redskins, or the Houston the Texans. One, I know, like, we get our own crap because we go one and out a lot in the, in the playoffs. So, like, that's the Bengals thing. Like, that's, they've perfected that really well. Everyone in this city gets really hyped, and the, everyone in this city is like, no, but we know it's going to happen. Like, we were excited all season, but we know we're losing. That's what they do. And somehow we're below that. Oh. Cincinnati Bengals, 3.4% chance. <laughs> I, I, I feel feeling lower now. <laughs> I'm, I'm sinking lower into my bed. It is, it is sucking me in. The Minnesota Vikings, 2.2%. Wait, what? Two and a half Minnesota Vikings, 2.2% chance of winning the Super Bowl versus Green Bay's 08 and the Bengals have a better chance than a team with Adrian Peterson? I'm sorry, this yes. is just going to keep blowing my mind here. So what you're telling me is that the Minnesota Vikings with are more favored to win the Super Bowl than the Packers. I'm literally speechless, and I'm not just saying this like for dramatic effect. I'm being sincere when I say this. The Minnesota Vikings, who have Adrian Peterson on offense, have a better chance than the Packers. I paused after Adrian Peterson because he is their offense. Who does Minnesota play in the first round? Seattle. Uh, they're going to lose. <laughs> the Seattle Seahawks presently are second in odds to win Super Bowl 50 at 15.1%. Well, I'm, uh, I believe that. Yeah, I, I think they're, well, they're my favorite right now. But they're saying personally. Minnesota has a better chance yeah. of beating the second-ranked team overall than the Packers have of beating Washington. Yeah, that What's makes Washington? a lot of sense. But Washington is 2.6. They're actually ahead of Minnesota. Washington is 2.6. So 2. three 6. times the Packers' chance. Three times better chance than the Packers. Which should tell so you pretty much what the odds are. All righty. This, this is why I don't go to sites like Football Outsiders. <laughs> because honestly, what? okay, I am not a math wizard, but who determines what the percentage of who's going to maybe win this game is like three nerds sitting in like an office with like, you know, pocket protectors and like, just like sitting in front of a computer going, you know, I think it's going to be 50% for that. I mean, honestly, who cares? It's a brand new season. Everybody right now is zero and zero. No negativity. So football Would outsiders you? can take their 0.8% and cram it up their outsider for all I care. Would you like me to explain the algorithms involved? No. No. Okay. <laughs> Unsubscribed. Hashtag not true fan. Hashtag football outsiders. I think you're. I think you're missing the larger point here. What has happened from week six to the wild card round of the playoffs that we weren't even supposed to be playing in this week? What's happened? How did one well, answer that question? I think if we knew what happened, it wouldn't be happening anymore, and we'd know how to fix it. Well, at least someone would know. I don't think anyone knows. Mike McCarthy said we just have to get off. the little things cleaned up. It, it, there's, no. It's not big. It's not. There's nothing no. big that's broken. Nothing's it's just broken. little things they got to get cleaned up. The thing is, you know, maybe, maybe it, there. I'm not 100 percent convinced there is something big broken. Maybe it is just every little piece is broken. We have lost every little piece. If you have a big machine and every piece of it is broken, <laughs> doesn't matter how big or little the piece is, it's all broken. There's just a lot of little pieces, and no one knows what all those little pieces are anymore. Actually, but trying to do the one, puzzle without the picture. But there's one thing that isn't broken. We've already talked about it. The defense. The defense. Is it defense? Exactly. Yeah. Other than the disaster in the desert, and I mean McCarthy's teams are prone to have one of those games every single year. And we got I, two this year. Denver. Well. Yep. But the defense is held. And Carolina was there until we came charging back at the end. So it hasn't just been one game this year. I, I think books will be written on the 2015 Packer season. Um, I've actually been thinking to myself, you know, they put out the season highlight video, and they title it with, like, some, like, you know, Legends of Lambeau and, you know, Pride and Glory and stuff like that. I wonder what this year is going to be. 
will it be something effective like, man, we shit the bed? Because, I, I mean, or, you know, what's up with that? How about that? I, I, have, I have a theory as to what is wrong with the team, and I think it starts with Aaron Rodgers. I am convinced, and I have been for months now, that he's hurt. And I think upper that he body, is lower pre- body. What do you think? I think it's his up. I think it's his upper body. It's like shoulder or something affecting yep. his throwing. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yep. Because if you look at his arm motion, first of all, he's been throwing a lot of like funky arm angles, like a lot of side army three quarter stuff that he never did before. If you look back at any game before this year, he had a perfect passer, you know, rhythm, position, motion, everything. He's very herky jerky right now. Um, he he, he and, did have that game where he hit his his elbow real real hard mm-hmm. on the turf. Uh, mm-hmm. What game was that? Do you remember what game that was? Uh, was I that think it was one San of the Diego. Lions games or San Diego? Bears, yeah. I, I think it was the Bears game. On it was the Bears game, wasn't it? Yep, it was the Bears, Bears game. game on Thanksgiving. That after the game. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So so my theory is that he is trying to compensate for whatever's ailing him by pressing so much, knowing full well that he doesn't have Jordy Nelson. He's got Eddie Lacy who's, you know, basically eaten his way onto the bench a couple times this year, and at other times looks like he's Ryan Grant or runs into a wall. you got James Starks who can't hold on to a ball. you got wide receivers that can't get any separation. You've got a tight end who catches the ball and crumples to the ground like, like paper. <laughs> and I think that he's honestly trying to do so much that he's pressing, but it all goes back to not being physically 100%. And I understand this time here, nobody's 100%. But there's a semi-serious injury that we are going to find out about after the season. Like, it wouldn't surprise me to hear in his final press conference of the year, McCarthy say something effective like, yeah, Aaron is going to have surgery on his elbow, shoulder, hand, whatever. And that affected him all season. But the bigger thing would then be this. If he was hurt all year, and if the Packers didn't report it all year, I wonder what the commission is going to think about that. Oh, boy. That would be bad. Because I believe reporting injuries is like a thing in the NFL, but I could be wrong. True fans would know that. This guy doesn't. Yeah, pretty sure you get a fine for that. And lying about yeah. it all week would be a pretty big one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so John has chimed in on the theory that Aaron Rodgers is hurt. He is physically injured, thus contributing to his dramatic change from last season. Do you concur, Al and Jamie, or do you have another theory? Well, I don't know that I have a better theory. That That's probably the one theory that would make the most sense after the fact, looking back at it. Uh, other possibilities are that he's just completely lost confidence in his team and his coaches and, and their ability to, to execute, and or that he feels like the direction or the, the, the plays that are being called aren't what he would be calling, and he's kind of mentally really frustrated and semi-checking out at times because of that. I mean, there's a lot of theories you can throw out there, and, and God help us, they've all been thrown out there. But I think the one that would make the most sense would be the one that John just put forth. Jamie? I, I agree. I mean, I think that that makes the most sense in that I don't I – th- I think he's too much of a professional to have just check out. I mean, I don't think he would do that intentionally. I think there's a point at which you kind of get to the season and everyone's feeling the same frustration of just things aren't working, things that used to work, things that used to come very easily, naturally, connections with people, pros, plays, being able to read the defense, all of that, and now it's just not happening, and you get frustrated, and you force things, you maybe try a little bit less. There's a note in our script about, you know, receivers running routes differently. I think there's, again, a lot of little pieces to it. Maybe it's just everyone's a little bit at 80%, and when you add all that up, the difference between everyone being at 100% playing mentally, physically, and everyone at 80 or 70 is is huge. And so I, I feel like an injury is most logical because I just, but again, I can't imagine them lying about it for so long. Maybe they don't know the severity of it. Maybe, oh, it's just, you know, like a little bit of a sore shoulder, then they're going to do an MRI after the season. They're just not doing one now, and they're going to be like, oh, no, it needs this, and off he goes to surgery and that so they avoid major fine or whatever. I don't know. Um, but but that doesn't make sense to me, Jamie. Why you know, NFL medical officials have to be even just liability wise with the players' union insurance settlements? Yeah. They they're not going to sit there and say, oh well, he might be injured, but we're going to let him play. 
and then That's continue to have him go I... out there and continue to play as miserably as he is or he, as he has been. It, it, there's That's just a why disconnect these are all there for weird me. theories. I can't, I can't <laughs> get on board with any full theory, be- and that's why I think when when we started this whole conversation, we're like, what's wrong with with the team and the offense, and why are we here? There was just silence, and us going, I don't know, mm-hmm. because how do you take someone who is so mechanically accurate, just Everything about the way that he approached the game, the way he played the game, it didn't have that kind of far, wild, passionate playing. It was going out and just rhythmatically, mechanically playing the game accurately. And now that's just gone. And I don't think his arm is just gone. I think a lot of it has to do with the play calls and the wide receiver routes. But I think some of it does have to do with him just not throwing the ball the same. I don't know why, though. And that's, I think, where we're having this discussion of, like, here's our hodgepodge series. Um, One of the things, and I put this in the script and I'll bring it up now, is, and I saw someone mention it on Twitter this week, is, you know, we've made some some comments and there's been talk about the the wide wide receivers and the lost Jordy and, you know, people not stepping up and just not, them not being on the same page as Aaron Rodgers, maybe not running the right routes, you're not running them fully, and I realize this is the year where they haven't had their own coach. I sang Edgar Bennett's praises to the highest level when he was wide receivers coach because I thought he did phenomenal with Sheriff Boykin and Miles White and just getting young guys ready to play with Aaron Rodgers, to play in the NFL and on the same page. And I, see, I, I wonder if not having a designated coach of having to share Van Pelt with the quarterbacks has – has changed the way that group is coached up. You would think that if they have the same coach, they might be on the same page, but apparently that's not working. I think that – go ahead, Al. No, I was actually going to throw it over to CD because he's asked all of us what our theories are, and I think he has a different one that he might want to talk about a little bit. Who, me? Who, you? Uh-huh. Oh, you still here? Not oh, I'm still here. I'm just listening to you guys. You guys are – It's on? It's music to my ears, man. No, I, I do think that there's you some mechanical issues. On Twitter, right? you, I did. You I, a question. Oh, is he just growing old? You want to expand on that? Is what oh, I'm yeah. At. I mean, I, I think it's. I think there's a point where that makes sense. I don't think it would fully explain the total drop in play that he had from last year to this year, but. It is a reality. We saw it happen with Brett Favre. Uh, we see it happen with nearly every quarterback, except for you know a very few uh, fantastic quarterbacks. But you just aren't in your prime anymore. Uh, your prime for a, a, an NFL football player, a quarterback, is going to be you know that 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. You're already starting to get. You're starting to press it a little bit. I mean, 32 is where you're going to have that drop and. That can explain some of the the missed throws and and just the the lack of uh, some some of the body accuracy and mechanics are just going to decline. Uh, but I don't think that explains everything. And I also think there's some there's some stuff going on. There's an injury too that's very very high upper body. Uh, and, and and I think he's distracted. I think there's something going on. Whether you take all of the rumors, uh, whether there's a spat with McCarthy, whether he's not connecting with his wide receivers, everything that's been thrown out, <clears throat> whether he has problems in his personal life. Something has to be more than a simple mechanical or physical error. It's more than just growing old. And it's probably more than just something bugging him, you know, him being distracted or troubled or, or something that we should be – it could be all three. But uh, I, I agree with you guys that I think there's something going on. And maybe it's our hope – that he's injured because an injury can be fixed and he can be better next year. But if it's something upstairs or if he's growing old, that's not going to get better next year. So it's very comfortable to say, oh, he's probably hurt. And he'll just rehab, have an MRI, have some surgery, and he'll be back next year. I'd like to to venture into the the dark place of there is an issue between him and McCarthy. Um, I'm all one for the drama. I'll admit it, okay? We've already been through this once before with a quarterback who basically went head-to-head with his coach. Now, the perception on the outside is that things were hunky-dory, for the most part, between Aaron and McCarthy. Up until probably 2013, I think it was. It might have even been last year when 
I don't remember when he took the clipboard and like chucked it on the ground when they were playing Detroit in that absolutely miserable game. He blew up on the sidelines with them against Tampa, I think it was. And everyone kind of said that it was just two very competitive people having a disagreement. What I hope is that if there truly is an issue between the two of them, whether it's Rodgers has an issue with McCarthy, McCarthy has issues with Rodgers, they have issues with each other, that they're adult enough to sit down after the season and figure it out. I could not even begin to imagine what would happen if they entered next year fractured like they are right now. And at least that's what the theory holds. How could this team function with the two of them still on the same team but not seeing eye to eye? It's one thing to have competitive disagreements. It's one thing to have you know a little bit of discord. I'm a big believer that disagreements sometimes yield to better results. Um, what I don't want to hear is that neither one of them are big boys enough to sit down and say, look, man, I got issues with you. Look, man, I got issues with you. Let's put everything on the table and get it off our chest. Because, God, I don't want to go through another season like this, a potential breakup down the road. I don't want to do it. I, I think I speak for all of you in saying, yeah, I don't think you want to go through that. I don't want to go through it again. I'll I'll, I'll get on that train. All right. Now, what if the train's already left the station? What if it's really that bad? I mean, if we're talking theories. You're going theories, to a dark place, John. A dark I, what just, place? I, no, no, no. Are you trying to say, just, what if we've crossed the Rubicon? Have we crossed the Rubicon? Because oh I have not used that expression in a long time. Oh, now, my God. You've got the to use another favorite phrase. Oh, like what a great You name. made his night. <laughs> oh, capers just, to just, you all. Now, there, there's a playoff game on Sunday, okay? But I, I think that everyone also is, maybe in the back of their minds, kind of looking to the off season, saying, like, okay, wh- what, what are they going to do? I think everybody always projects a little bit into the off season. You can't just go, like, okay, we're 72 hours from game day. You're always looking into the future. I'm serious. What happens if if there are issues between them and if things just stay as they are, then what? Not going to be much fun, is it? No, it's not. How can it be much fun being a Packer fan <laughs> if it continues? Well, it's a dumpster so, fire. That's what it would end up being. It would be a dumpster fire. And I, I, I do have to say, you know, speaking, you know, speaking of of Rogers and McCarthy, and I, I think I don't know if it's my imagination, but I think I have seen more than any other season Rodgers show visible disdain for a play that was just called or or a timeout that wasn't called or or something like that. I think we've seen multiple displays of that this year, and that, to me, is what really shows frustration, that that he's frustrated with, like, why did we do that? That's not what we should have done, you know, that type of thing. And, And I don't think I've seen it as much in the past. We've seen occasional blow-ups, you know, where they'll go over to the sideline and they'll yell at each other for a minute and then everything's fine. But I just see a lot of body language from, from Rogers, you know, just giving disgusted waves or looks at at the uh, sideline at times. Is it my imagination or you guys, have you had that impression too? Um, well, if you ever stop by the Chiefs Head TV chat during the game, you will know that there are certain people who are certain that Rodgers is disinterested, hates the team, wants to be traded, is probably asking for a trade right now, and will be traded the minute the season's over um, because he doesn't <laughs> like anyone on the team. That's why he doesn't sit with them. and That's why he pouts on the sideline. He's just the same as Cutler now. Um, I'm trying to make sure I oh, got wow. all of them in there. Yeah, and so wow. you're not look. the only one who's noticed. Um, well, I didn't say any of that. Now, wait a I minute. I know, but I'm, I, so no, I'm saying that – don't that's the extreme that of it, but no, that's <laughs> the extreme of it. But yes, there are others who are noticing. Just I don't I don't know what the word I first wanted to say disgruntled, but just the discord, the disconnect well, that seems well, forget, to be there. Forget the knuckleheads in the, in the chat. I'm asking you guys, people whose opinions I value, <laughs> I suppose, to those other knuckleheads. <laughs> I I think that I have noticed that there does seem to be some if you want to use one word, some um, frustration on the face of Rodgers with regards to play calling, calling timeouts when they really shouldn't be calling timeout and all that stuff. More this season than in seasons before. I wonder how much of, you know, the the struggles that they've had on offense is just accumulating with that. And it's just going to come out at some point because, you know, if McCarthy does his player evaluations, after the season ends like he's done for years, I would certainly hope that they are very honest with each other when they talk to each other at that point 
so that they can start the next season with a clean slate. I, I, I've said it before. I hope they don't act like children and are not afraid to say what's really on their mind. Because if you treat a player with kid gloves, I'm sorry, this is going to come across really bad. If you treat a player with kid gloves, the player's going to think they rule the roost, and that's not how it's supposed to be. Ultimately, the coach and the GM, they rule the roost, and the player is an employee of that organization and should fall in line with whatever's asked of them by their boss. We found out the hard way, uh, let's see, eight years ago, what happens when a player thinks they're above the organization and can do whatever they want. I pray to God that they do not go through that again by giving him the power over the organization. Done. And that's not even a rant. That's a fact. <laughs> um, I My serious answer to your, your question, Al, is, is yes, I noticed that as well. The thing is, I feel like I've always noticed that with Rogers. I just seem like I, and it's I more think this, this year. That's kind of my point. I, I The thing is, no? I but I guess it could be, but I feel like because we're losing and the fact that it's more, I just... I feel like that's just him. Like, that's his personality. There's, And I don't mind that he does it, but I guess personally, like, that's not something I'm that fond of. So that's why I'm always like, I probably wouldn't dig his personality because that's who he kind of is. Um, but to John's point, I get the feeling that McCarthy isn't the kind of person that would treat Rodgers with kid gloves just after. Because luckily, McCarthy went through what we all went through eight years ago. And... I, I And I sometimes get the feeling that, and this is just my personal opinion on, on Aaron Rodgers' personality, and I don't know him, so I speak completely off, but that he doesn't like to be told what to do that well. Mm-hmm. That's probably why this rift is existing. And so, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that McCarthy should be softer on him. I think McCarthy would be tougher on him and be like, no, this is it, and that's how it's going. And you either like it, deal with it, grow up and move on, or go sit over there and pout, and we'll duke it out with Pondley and Scoot. <laughs> Scoot. <laughs> See? I have to make it, you know, light at the end there. <sighs> I feel much better. Thank you for scooting. <laughs> scoot, scoot. There you are. <laughs> well, it is time. It is that time we've all been waiting for. We had the magic Twitter poll a little bit early in the evening on who was going to get negative first. Uh, the overwhelming winner from the Twitterverse was, of course, our very own John Rahor. Uh, <laughs> congratulations, John. Uh, your prize, your prize for winning this is you get to go on your own rant. Are you excited? Oh, I'm thrilled to death. Are you ready to go? Hit the button. Rants with Rahor. The fact that still has a sting is just mind-boggling, but whatever. This is actually not going to be a negative rant. Um, let, let's talk about anyone who watched or listened to Pack of Transplants last night, listened to Corey, kind of talk about what the role of football is. You know, I think the four of us on this page, on this page, on this show, we, we've spoken to each other enough over the years, so that we're very passionate people when it comes to our Packers. Um, this is like our escape from reality. Um, we could put on our green and gold glasses or even smash them up against our face if we want to, um, talking about the Packers, because it gives us a chance to not worry about the day-to-day things that happen in our lives. Um, but, you know, day-to-day does happen, and it, it sometimes is a gut punch about reality. Um, anyone who knows Adam Check, you know, is aware that he is going through an absolutely devastating battle with cancer right now. He's stage four uh, colon cancer, and uh, to be honest, the prognosis is not very good. Um, he has a Karen Bridge dot com page set up, uh, which him and his wife are keeping track of his daily, I guess, struggles through this. Um, you know, my wife, and I have not shared this with anybody you know, yet, is going through her own very personal um, health struggles right now also. I'm taking 2016 as a, as a reapproach about what the role of football really is. Um, so I'd like to thank Corey from last night for kind of starting it, and I just want to sound on that a little bit. You know, we watch these games, and we we put our heart and soul into this team, whether it's three hours on Sunday, whether it's seven days a week, whether it's 365 days a year, and it's our escape from reality. Um, but the fact of the matter is that we are all dealing with our own personal things, and sometimes that leads us to places that 
we don't really want to go to. And we use football as a way to get away from that. So I have a thought for everybody who listens out there, for the three of you that are listening right now. You know, in, instead of trying to nitpick ways about how someone should be a fan, how about you just let them be a fan? Because you don't really know what's going on in their life. You don't really know what their role of football is. And you don't really know what they're thinking on the inside when they say what they say about the team. Maybe they're getting all their frustrations about life out on the open and using the Packers as that bridge, if that kind of makes sense. You know, I'm not one to tell someone what to say, what to do. I believe that you should be able to do what you want uh, with regards to football in particular. But maybe a little bit of compassion, maybe a little bit of heart, maybe a little bit of soul and caring about other people before you start attacking them. Think about what you're saying to them. Think about how that might affect them. Think about what your words will do to that person. Adam is one of the most passionate fans I've ever met in my life. And if he wants to go out and curse every single moment of every single day about this team, I wouldn't care one bit. I'm very thankful that I don't have to go through what he's dealing with. I'm very thankful I don't have to go through what his family's dealing with. But I also support him in doing what he wants to do to deal with his life using this as an escape from reality. Just food for thought. Think about others a little bit more in 2016. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be as passionate as I always have been, but maybe a little bit more considerate too. Maybe I won't jump down your throat when you say, you know, John, you're an idiot. You're right. I am an idiot. And I'm using this as an escape for my idiotic everyday life. And you know what? I don't give a shit what you think. I don't really care because you don't know what I'm going through. So frankly, your words, they're nothing to me. You can be a fan your way. Let me be one my way. Thanks. Well said, John. Well said. John, I love you, but that wasn't really a rant. I said it wasn't going to be. <laughs> then why well, did play the sting? sting. We wasted yeah. our sting. That's a wasted sting. Oh, CD hates that. I know. But no, but in, but in all seriousness, uh, seriousness, John, I, I appreciate uh, those words. I appreciate you. You're talking about Adam. Um, I go back at least five, six years with Adam. Met him in person a couple of times. Met his wife. Uh, just a great family. You know, they have a young two-year-old. Uh, his wife is pregnant. You know, with another child, and and now they have to deal with this. So they certainly could use <clears throat> help from anybody out there in Packer Nation in, in any which way you can, whether it's just positive thoughts or prayers or encouragement on Facebook or Twitter or, you know, they've, there's websites, uh, they, they've got an account on something called foodtidings.com where you can buy a meal for the family and have it delivered, you know, whatever. If, if you can't do anything monetarily, then just keep them in your thoughts, um, pray for them, send them positive thoughts, uh, give them good tidings on, on Twitter and Facebook, and uh, and just keep them in your thoughts as, as a really nice family that needs your help. Ditto. And, and to add on that, John, we like you too. So we'll be thinking of you. Definitely prayers out to both you and yes. your wife, friend. All right. Well, everyone take a deep breath. I think it's time to get to this week's game predictions. Cheesehead Radio. Back your game predictions. Well, the Super Bowl favorite Green Bay Pack. Wait, scratch up. The and NFC North <laughs> champion. Wait, finish that. The third seeded Green Bay. Wait, never mind. <laughs> Let's recheck that poll. The sixth seeded wild card Green Bay Packers will travel this Sunday well, to well, Washington. Also. What is it? Oh, is it Saturday? Fifth seeded. It's Sunday. Fifth seeded. That's right. I'm sorry. It is on Sunday. Yes. Fifth yeah. seated. I apologize. Yeah, that's it. Fifth seated. Take on the Washington Redskins over at FedEx Field. Uh, 0.8% chance of winning, according to Football Outsiders, which was roundly booed by our astute panel of hosts here. Let's take it around and see what they think. We're going to start, of course, with Jersey Al Bracco. What say you? Hey. Call me crazy. Call yes. me insane. Yeah, you crazy. You crazy, man. I got the Packers winning 24-13. I, I think the defense will have no problem holding the Redskins down. Um, and I just feel that week after week after week, we've been waiting for the Packers offense to do something. There's no bigger back against the wall than this week. And I think somehow they find a way to score some points, 24-13. 
All right. Jersey Al believes that somehow current trends will reverse mysteriously and the Packers will yes, win. Thank absolutely. you. Heading over now to the amazing Jamie Snowden. What do you say? Um, well, for those of you who don't know, my husband is a ginormous Washington fan. Oh, that's so right. So this will be a fun, you fun, didn't know that. fun game. Yes. Um, so I, I am picking the Packers to win. I am terrified by my own picks. <laughs> but Packers 21, Washington 18, which I feel is the exact same score I said probably for the Vikings game. I really just don't know anymore. I feel like. I feel like, Al, you should be right. The Packers offense will come out and something will turn on. But, and it's hard to believe in anything Washington does and hard to believe in Kirk Cousins. But they're right. so upwardly trending and we're so down there. downwardly trending, it, it's hard. It is. But I, I, I'm going for the win because you have to beat Washington. And I don't know if I can live in my house if Washington wins. <laughs> The you gloating. Guys have any, oh, have any kind the of gloating. Bet, you guys have any kind no. of bet going? No. No, because it, I'd like to stay married for at least another year. <laughs> so, because we have to play them next season, too, in the regular season. It's, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, Jamie Snowden predicting a, a bit of a change in fortune for the Packers. Going to head on now to Mr. Positivity, uh, the man who has been schooling me on what it means to be a fan. John, Rayhor, what do you say? I know that everyone's thinking I'm going to take the Packers to lose, but I'm not. I think they're going to win this game. I think that somehow, some way, they're going to sneak out a 24-20 win on the road against Washington. Book it. And my name is C.D. Angeli. Someone in the script uh, typed in a score for me saying Washington 77, Packers 0. I'm not going to say they're going to lose by that much, but I am going to say the Packers are going to take one on the chin. Um, I'm going to say a score of 21-17, and Washington will win. And the only reason I'm really doing this is because every time I pick against them on this show, they win. So I'm really hoping somehow or another. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes. This is my sacrifice. I will take one in the loss column uh, in the hopes and prayers that somehow uh, Aaron Rodgers will. Yeah, that, that's that's what I'm going for. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. That's everybody. That is everyone, and I think this has been a nice extra long episode. Yes. But it is yeah. time to bring it to a close. Well, thank you all so much for joining us tonight on on Cheesehead Radio. Make sure to head on over to PackersTalk.com to get all the podcasts. Please follow at PackersTalkNet on Twitter and like Packers Talk Network page on Facebook. Cheesehead Radio and all Packers Talk podcasts are available on iTunes. Just Google Packers Talk iTunes and you'll find it. Be sure to subscribe and please leave us a review if you can. You can also listen in by using Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, or your favorite podcasting app to search for Packers Talk. Finally, please be sure to support our wonderful, amazing sponsors, Mayfield Sports Marketing, at Mayfield Sports on Twitter, and Waukesha Sports Card, at Waukesha Sports on Twitter. They do a lot for us, so show them some love. All righty. Jamie does a little you better job of that, Al. Just no offense, but Jamie really <laughs> does have that. Jamie really oh, has absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yeah, that. that absolutely. Outfit. Yeah. I'm, much I'm the rudder in the glue. You, you're the rudder. You're the <laughs> glue that holds the rudder. You're the glue. Oh, I'm not sure. Good hey night, guys, go good talk, India. Good to have us all back Talk together. to you next, week next week when we're talking about the second round of the playoffs. Go, Pat, yeah. go. All right. Eddie Lacy, Mike Daniels, Gilbert Brown, Don Barclay, Micah Hyde, your Green Bay Packers, yesterday's legends and today's superstars. From corporate or nonprofit events to private parties, add some spice, hire a Packers player from Mayfield Sports Marketing. For details, just go to PackersTalk.com and click on Player Appearances. Are you looking for some signed Packer memorabilia? Look no further than Waukesha Sports Cards. If the Green Bay Packer can sign it, Waukesha Sports Cards has it. Check our website for upcoming Packer player and legend signings. Go to Waukesha Sports Cards.